All right, guys, we're back with the screen team, and we're getting ready to review one of the hottest movies out right now. It's called Beauty and the Beast. We're not talking about the animated film from the early 1990s. We're talking about the live action from uh, 2017. came out a few weeks ago. We've got Matt and we've got Jenna Whitworth here in the studio to tell us all about it. Matt, you need to take a back seat for this one, my friend. We've got Jenna in here. <laughs> Jenna, you contacted me like months ago. You're like, I want Beauty and the Beast. Yes, I, I did. want a lot of jealous uh, screen teamers. There too, were. I've had could. like I've had like four or five. I want Beauty. Nope. Sorry. It's been Sorry called. in advance. It's been called, my friends. <laughs> I just want you to know that your judging in this movie is going to be judged by all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so Beauty and the Beast, mm-hmm. live action, fan or no fan? Totally a fan. I thought it was really good. I thought yeah. the costume, the sets, everything were very true to the French period of the time. Okay. The French period, what about... Uh, let me let me try to rephrase my question here. Mm-hmm. When I haven't seen the film, but when I looked at a lot of the trailers, I was comparing the film to the 1991 mm-hmm. animated masterpiece. classic masterpiece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you do? Did you have an open mind watching it, or were you like, "Oh, that's"? You know? I totally compared the entire time. Yeah, I do that though because I am mm-hmm. so in love with the animated series of all the Disney princesses mm-hmm. that when I go and see the live action stuff, I just I compare the two because. It has to be the same, in a sense. It pretty much has to be the live-action version of the animated. Yeah, and that's why I didn't like the Jungle Book uh, live-action. I really wanted to, and Mm -hmm. just I loved the uh, animated movie from 1968 too much to really let that go. And I'm sure it was a good movie, but I couldn't look at it objectively. So this one, I wasn't as attached to uh, Beauty and the Beast, so I could say, hey, this was a a good movie. I like the differences in direction they took with it. Um, and I thought that the the logic that they filled in for some of the gaps from yes. the animated movie were good. Like that the kingdom forgot about they, uh, the kingdom was forgotten about whenever the spell was cast. So yeah. the village forgot all about them. Otherwise, it looks right. like that prince was terrible at his job <laughs> yes. at being yeah. a prince. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I like that they filled in like Belle's mother's backstory. Oh, they did. And all that. Yeah. yeah and what happened to her and. Um, where they came from, and I thought the music was spot on. I mean, it was almost identical. It was awesome. So what did you think about Emma Watson's singing voice? Because it's, I don't know the original lady who did the voice and singing, but she was... Amazing. Yeah, yeah she was. I, I thought know. Emma Watson was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, she doesn't have I the powerhouse tell, vocals. Yeah, she doesn't have the yeah. powerhouse. I could tell she was holding back on her vibrato, which made me happy, mm-hmm. because I feel like hers would have been the really up and down really quick vibrato and um not really what this needed no it needed more of a smooth and then she would chop off the endings almost like she wasn't confident so when she would get to the ending of a phrase she would say charming instead of holding it out or anything and that bugged me yeah Yeah. it almost felt like she was trying to add a quirk Mm -hmm. to uh you know add a idiosyncrasy to the singing right uh, to give it character instead of it coming through naturally, but overall, I thought there was an innocence to her voice that really yeah. played into the character. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought all the actors and singers were great. Um, I, from what I've read, the guy that played Gaston and the guy that played LeFou actually sang on set while they were acting. Oh, wow. everybody yeah. else did the pre-recorded and just mimed it. Yeah. Let me ask you about, uh, Sabrina told me there was, I think, a couple of new songs in this film. Mm-hmm. How did how did those turn out? I thought they were great. Um, mm-hmm. The Beast only had one song, mm-hmm. which I thought was very fitting, and the song he did sing was really good. I thought it felt well. He had one the... solo. He had one song by himself, but he did yeah. sing, this, like in the original animated film, he sang um, the reprisal uh, from the beginning of the movie. Um, what about, oh, what is this? How can it be? That's right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So he had one solo song that was new. The Shutter and... at My Paw song, <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah. I thought that was really good. Um, yeah. I thought the new songs added really well to it. It didn't mm. take away like mm. some like Maleficent. Just not Yeah. Good. Maleficent is. Uh, no. Terrible. Terrible. You're right. Um, <laughs> gives me nightmares right? thinking about that film. <laughs> me um, too. CGI. Um, mm-hmm. When I saw the trailers for the film, I was like, man, the beast looks a little off. Some of the characters look a little too. off. What yeah. did you think about the CGI? Not the final product. No. no. I didn't notice it at all. Oh, okay. Now, they didn't build up to the dread of the beast like they did in the animated movie. In a live-action movie, I should be more fearful of a beast like mm-hmm. this, where in the animated film, I thought that they built up to him because everybody in the castle was afraid of him, even if they yeah. defied him like Lumiere, you know, yeah. by inviting Maurice into the castle when he was cold and hungry. Um, He still was very fearful of the beast. In this movie, Ewan McGregor's Lumiere isn't as fearful of the beast. Mm-hmm. He's... 
it, it's like a fearful respect. Whereas in the other one, they really build up a sense of dread that, and it makes yeah. his turn later in the movie more powerful than in this one. I also thought Bell's and B's relationship was much better in the animated film. It progressed more naturally. They were such at odds, and then they they kind of built up to their love a lot better than in this one. This one, I thought the first half of the film was solid, but not great. And in the second half, it really got good. Mm-hmm. And then once their chemistry clicked, it really went home, you know. I'm curious, um, is this a film that you can take little ones to? I mean, is there any scary parts with the with the beast? Uh, you know, not really. That's, I thought the animated yeah. movie was scarier. I thought the animated to be honest. was scarier. They'll probably be scared of the wolves part, but that was also yeah. pretty scary. You know, the scariest part of the original was the stained glass part with the, the enchantress and the old beggar woman yeah, yeah, yeah. From, the, from the animated movie. And that's scarier yeah. than anything in this movie, I thought, honestly. But then again, I'm an adult now, so I can't really look at it obje- objectively. Yeah, I would say probably the wolves yeah. would be scary. And maybe scary. some of the beast um, moments. And maybe the fight scene at the end. But, you know, and Matt said he felt like the movie was kind of, the set was darker looking. And I thought it felt very bright. Mm -hmm. So I thought the cinematography was darker looking. I thought it was harder to see the the vibrance of the the cast's, uh, you know, uh, costume design Mm -hmm. and and the art direction. I thought it wasn't as easy to see. And it could have just been the theater that we were at. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that it, that was uh, one of my big knocks against it. And really not even that big. It was more of a nitpick because it still looked beautiful, but I couldn't see it, how vibrant everything was, even in the, the village, you know. Did you guys see it in 3D? No. No, we didn't. Okay. And I that's can't. to be expected in 3D. Okay. You know, it's going to be yeah. a little bit darker usually, especially okay. uh, at, uh, you know, a smaller theater. But uh, we neither one of us like to spend the extra money for it. It gives her a migraine and mm-hmm. it gives me a... Uh, uh, you know, less in my wallet. So, well, it's just not good either. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. a gimmick. So. I mean, there's very, very few movies who can can really knock that out of the park. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. This one I wouldn't mind seeing in 3D, but I don't think that it's necessary. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, let's hit on the elephant in the room. Uh, Beauty and the Beast got a lot of uh, controversy. I think like a few weeks before it was supposed to open, mm-hmm. director came in and said uh, that in this film, Disney has its first openly gay character. A lot of people mm-hmm. um, were upset by that. You mm-hmm. guys saw the film. What did you guys think of those particular scenes? So had I not been told they were gay, I probably would not have thought anything of it. I probably wouldn't have even thought of them as gay. I would have thought chalked of them as it French. up to you as the <laughs> yeah, stereotypical French persona of being overly flamboyant. Right. So there are really only two scenes that you can go, hmm, okay, I guess they're gay. But it didn't bother me at all. Matt, how about you? Well, I want to start off by saying that my great-grandmother was from France, so I can say that. <laughs> so I don't want to hear any uh, hate mail for it. But yeah, it, I didn't really mind it. Yeah. I was worried about this movie coming in because Emma Watson's a very lovely actress, a very nice actress. Mm-hmm. She's also a very outspoken feminist, and I don't really like, and I don't want to get you know political about it, but I'm not a big fan of modern feminism because I don't think it's about equality, mm-hmm. even though I think that she, her heart's in the right place. I was worried that it was going to be very... Um, misandrous and you know man hating to a degree and about male oppressors and, st- and it wasn't it wasn't political at all I don't think that they took any time to be political I was surprised more by the uh, interracial relationships in the movie, which uh, again they didn't make it into a big deal it was just hey there's uh, you know a couple there's she's uh, African American uh, wife and he's you know white uh, husband and nobody cares yeah. So it's kind of nice. It was nice for all demographics, I think. Yeah. And again, that they didn't make a big deal. They didn't make it a point to be pretentious. It was just, this is a part of the story. And uh, they didn't really even address it. it. It was kind of nice and refreshing in that sense. Yeah. To, to where that they could have uh, something for everyone, but not be... Um, uh, it's abrasive almost with like it. they just chose who is best for those roles instead of... Oh, hey, like it should had, be, maybe? Right? Yeah. Instead of having a political agenda? <laughs> exactly, great. yeah. Um, so I'm curious, Jenna, is this a film that you liked so much that you want it in your movie collection? Oh, absolutely. That and Cinderella Man. Those two live actions so yeah. far are my favorites, and I will watch those along with the animated any day. Very good. All right. That's um, some glowing revo- reviews from uh, Matt and Jenna here with the latest Beauty and the Beast. Uh, guys, before you go, let's do some plugs. Uh, first off, Matt, uh, we just reviewed Beauty and the Beast. And I know over at Whitworth's, you guys got the uh, beautiful... <laughs> Thank you for the shameless plug. Chris. I know. Yes. That's how I do. We had the Disney Enchanted Jewelry line, um, and uh, it's all fantastic pieces. D- official Disney carrier, the only one in the area. And um, we have some pieces from the Bell Collection. We also have some from the Cinderella collection and from uh, the Frozen collection. And, of course, any piece that you see online, we can order in as well. 
Um, we have a beautiful uh, crown shaped uh, ring in, and as well as the mirror mm-hmm. uh, oh, pendant cool. from the movie. Yeah, and it has uh, citrine stone in it. Uh, you know, for the yellow dress that Belle wore mm-hmm. in the movie. So beautiful piece of jewelry. If you want to uh, go see this movie in style, we we'll recommend stopping <laughs> by and checking it out. And where are you guys located? Oh, uh, Walmart's next door to us. Actually, that's, that's right, right here in Popper Bluff. <laughs> and uh, Jenna, we talked about Matt's profession. Let's talk mm-hmm. about uh, your profession. Uh, I know you've got something that's very, very close to your mm-hmm. heart. What what do you do? I am a board certified music therapist and I am owner of Fundamental Music Therapy LLC here in town. And basically I work with children and adults with developmental disabilities. I use the music to help them with their everyday goals like academics, their motor skills, all through using music. It's pretty fantastic. And the kids don't even realize they're working on these goals because they're having fun playing music. That's amazing. That's really, really <laughs> cool. Um, if people want to get in touch with you and want to know more about the uh, services, how do they get in touch with you? Sure. They can look up Fundamental Music Therapy on Facebook or they can give me a call at 269-998-1459. Beautiful. Matt, Jenna, thank you guys for being on the show. Appreciate you us. always. Uh, we'll be back next Saturday with another edition of the Screen Team. And remember, we want you to know before you go.